Hello everyone, in this video we will show you how to trap emails with Mailhawk for staging sites. Here at Cleaver, we use three different environments, development, staging and production. The need to send emails arises while testing modules such as user registration and password reset in different environments. We also send an email to a user once server provisioning completes. It becomes annoying when we have to send a test email to a live email inbox. Test email pile up, make our inbox look dirty and can become costly when we have to send them to live inboxes. If your product uses a tool like Mailgun for email delivery, you will obviously want to use it in a test mode. However, there are certain limitations that come with it. Mailgun has email address limitations, meaning you can only send emails to 5 authorized users. If you want to send an email to a new address, then you will have to add the address to the list of authorized emails, accept the invitation before sending emails to it. While testing Cleaver and Feedmos, Feedmos is another product developed by the team behind Cleaver. It helps with collecting and responding to feedback and support issues from your users. We wanted to tackle this limitation, annoyance of sending emails to real addresses and reduce the expenses incurred from sending test emails. The first step we took was to set up multiple test emails. With this approach, we still had to switch between one inbox and another. Ultimately, we decided to host Mailhog on a shared server for our use case. Mailhog is an email testing tool for developers. It runs on an SMTP server which catches any messages sent to it. With Mailhog, we are able to see our test emails in a web interface instead of the inbox and we did not have to worry about remembering the test email addresses. Let me show you how we hosted Mailhog on a shared server using Cleaver. The first step is to provision a server. Once the provisioning completes, you need to SSH into the server and run some commands to install Go and Mailhog. To SSH into server, you need to have your public key added to the server. Get inside the server page, go to the SSH key section, click on add new key, copy your SSH key. Paste your SSH key in the public key input field, provide a name, select usernames and click on add key button. Once the SSH key is added, you can SSH into the server by running the command SSH root at public IP. First install go if you have not already installed it. You can see go is already the newest version in my device. Now it's time to install mailhog using the go command. Now we have successfully installed Go and Mailhog in our server. Now we need to create a site in order to expose the Mailhog web interface. Let's get back to Cleaver, go to the sites page, click on add site button, select generic port app as the app type so that we can expose Mailhog port to this domain. You can use temporary domain or use a custom domain. The port we are trying to expose is 8025 and click on the add button. If you are running Mailhog in a different port, you can provide a different port number while creating a site. Once the site is created, final step is to set a process monitor. In order to set a process monitor, go to the process monitor section. Process monitor takes care of running Mailhog persistently. To create a process monitor, click on the add new process monitor button, provide a name, provide command to start Mailhog. You need to use full path for the command. It will be slash root slash go slash bin slash Mailhog. You need to run this command as a root user you can leave the advanced options as it is and click on the add process monitor button once the process monitor is created let's head back to the site section and open the site you can see here the port we exposed is running on the site we created if you need authentication on this type of site you can use the authentication feature provided by cleaver to use the feature go to the site and click on authentication once you are on this page you can see an option to lock site click on the button the site has been locked. Now unwanted visitors cannot access the site. I refresh the page and it's asking me username and password. I have not set up the username and password yet. Get back to the authentication page. On the action button, click on the add new credentials. I'll create a new user. My credentials have been added. Now let's head back to the Mailhawk page. Once the authentication is enabled, when you visit the page, you will be asked for credentials. Once you provide the valid credentials, you will be able to access the site. You are now all set to trap emails with Mailhawk. That's all for this video. See you in the next one. Let us know in the comment if you want us to cover something or if you are running into an issue.